Hey, it's Mike here, and today, masks. Should the average healthy person in the Western world be wearing a face covering to prevent the coronavirus like the CDC says? Pam Popper says no in her recent video, quote, what the research shows about masks. By the way, I'm gonna talk about masks today and tell you why you don't wanna wear a mask. She advocates against mask use for the general population and in an office setting like her own. I wanted to do a general mask video, but I think the point will be better illustrated by responding to her claims in part. And here is a taste of what she says. Health authorities who are ginning up panic, and it still escapes me why any health authority would want to do it, but they are. They sometimes make things up, such as that masks are protective, and sometimes they'll cite research, but increasingly the research is proving to be unreliable. We're going to see if authorities are just pulling this out of their butt by looking at a wide array of research, and to be fair, some of it has come out after she said this. I don't think she's changed her position, though. And I want to say several times on my channel, I've mentioned Pam in a positive light in the realm of plant-based diets. I simply just disagree with her on this topic here, but going beyond Pam, which sounds like the newest meat replacement, it's not. I just think it's really important to get this issue right, not just for this pandemic, but for the next one that can happen so we can react appropriately. Anyway, let's go. A general point here, it's obviously really appealing when you're told that you do not have to wear a mask. Pretty much nobody wants to be wearing a mask. I know there are some people probably on the introverted side that are saying they love the anonymity of shopping with a mask and going around with a mask, but most people really don't want to wear them. Sadly, this has become a bit of a tribal political issue, the no mask versus the mask camp. And I just want to zoom out and look at this from a public health perspective and I encourage other people to do the same. But one thing is for sure, people in the areas that are most affected by this have the most deaths are definitely in support of wearing masks. Just try not wearing a mask into a Staten Island grocery store. <laughs> Okay, now to set the stage for the main debate here, should healthy people be wearing face coverings, cloth masks? I wanna mention something that's really important and that is that healthy people is a term that is a little bit confusing and loose when you're talking about this virus. The unique part of this disease is that these healthy appearing asymptomatic people can spread the disease and they can do it very effectively. That's what makes it different. That's probably why SARS-1 only ended up killing 774 people. Well, this virus has killed 110,000 people in the US and well over 300,000 people globally. It's fair to say that roughly half or even more of all spread is from asymptomatic people from this study in the journal Nature. We're talking 44%. And then from this preliminary study, because this data is so new. Pre-symptomatic spread was responsible for 48% and 62% of all spread in Singapore and their China sample respectively. In addition, it appears that the amount of virus that the body emits is highest in those pre-symptomatic and early symptom stages before your body really gets a response going. The major concern here is droplets that are spewed out and apparently even loud talkers could be more of a risk here. And I don't know about you, but I've been in a theater before when it's dark and there's that actor on stage and you can just see as they're talking, just the spit droplets that are coming off being highlighted by the light. It's not just about coughing. There's also the notorious choir event where a bunch of people with no symptoms went and they sang and then later people died. Well, singing may expel more of those droplets. So now singing is spewing. We, we can't have anything anymore. This brings me to an interesting study that has been accepted by the BMJ that not only highlights the asymptomatic point Point, but also the mask point. They looked at 100 families in Beijing where family members were taking care of sick patients. The study found that face mask use by the primary case, which is that first family member infected, and family contacts before the primary case developed symptoms was 79% effective in reducing transmission. So if that healthy person who didn't realize that they were sick wore a mask, they had a 79% rate of protecting their family. So the researchers conclude this further supports universal face mask use and also provides guidance on risk reduction for families living with someone in quarantine or isolation and families of health workers who may face ongoing risk. This is also very good evidence for why Asian countries that have very high rates of mask use, we're talking up in the high 90s percent in many cases, were able to quash this way better than we were here in the U.S. Obviously, they're really good at social distancing, closing their borders and tracing and things like that, but still, that study is huge. I'd love to keep firing off studies, but let's just respond to some of her claims. The first one, she sort of illustrates why her office doesn't use masks. Here she is. In an office like this, where you're wearing a mask, every time you um, talk on the phone, you take the mask off so that you can be understood. 
you get a drink of water and you're going to take the mask you have to pull it down if you're going to eat something you have to take it off well by by and then you're handling pencils and pens and papers and uh, cell phones and all this sort of thing well by the by noon every day you're what you've really done is created a bacterial cesspool and um, and it's dangerous. So okay, first point, I don't see why she's more concerned about bacteria here than she is about the virus. I know she's concerned about heart disease, which is our leading killer. And we had at least a solid 30 days where we averaged more deaths from this coronavirus than we did from heart disease. And in addition to that, I don't know why it's more of a bacterial cesspool to have masks and touch all the objects that you're normally touching, like your phone. If anything, your coworkers wearing masks might prevent bacteria like strep, streptococcus, getting on your things. I don't know, anyway. All right, now let's get to her first claim about the efficacy of masks that has a source. And she jumps right over cloth masks to actually sort of try and debunk surgical masks. Here she is. Well, just remember, viruses are tiny, tiny, tiny little things. And um, as it turns, it turns out they can penetrate the surgical mask barrier. According to the U.S. National Academy of Sciences in community settings, quote, face masks are not designed or certified to protect the wearer from exposure to respiratory hazards. Okay, first we need to make a distinction. Virus penetrating the mask does not equate to not preventing any disease transmission. And we need to first talk about the different tiers of masks. First, we have that N95 mask, which prevents 95% of particles at zero 0.3 microns in size. So that actually lets some through. Should we just stop having doctors wear those? But people have actually looked at the efficacy of surgical masks here and using that same 0.3 micron scale, we see from this study that they were around 60 percent effective and then we also have you know, this study published by the Cambridge University Press looked at even smaller virus particles that were 0 0.0202 0 microns when the coronavirus that we're looking at is 0 0.1 microns so actually five times smaller than the current virus we're trying to protect from and they found that surgical masks were in the high 80s for filtration that they blocked well over 80 percent of these particles more on that study in a bit because it covers a ton of interesting materials, but I really wish that she linked her sources below. She didn't, so I had to go searching for them, and I will link all of my sources below, including the ones of hers that I talk about. But this is from a 2010 book by the National Academy of Sciences. This quote was used in an anti-mask editorial, which is where I assume she found it. But if you actually look at the context of the whole paragraph, the reiterating what we already know, the surgical mask was originally invented to prevent disease from going from a doctor performing surgery to a patient. So no, they weren't specifically designed to protect the wearer, but that doesn't mean that they don't. I mean, Viagra was originally designed to be a heart medication. Look how that turned out. The paragraph then ends with, we need further research on this topic. And that was in 2010. And the study that I mentioned above measuring the filtration efficacy of these surgical masks was later, it's newer. And there's another study here that regrettably is worth mentioning. That was an animal study on hamsters where they basically took a mega cage and they put a surgical mask material between them as a barrier. This isn't a perfect representation. You know, they aren't wearing it on their face and they're next to each other 24 hours a day, but the results were still compelling. With no barrier after a week, two thirds of the previously uninfected hamsters were infected. With the mask material barrier, only 17% were infected. And I just had to mention that because it's a situation where the transmission of the exact virus that we're concerned about was reduced by nearly four times with the surgical mask material that she is trying to say doesn't work. All right, now for this next part, which really motivated me to make this video because I felt that her interpretation was so wild. Now she used a study to say that cloth masks are actually more dangerous than not wearing cloth masks. Now due to short Shortages, a lot of health directors, including ours, have been instructing people to make their own masks out of cloth. According to a hospital study in which hospital wards were randomized to medical masks, cloth masks, or a control group, which included a high proportion of people who wore some type of mask, the rate of infection was highest in the cloth mask group as compared to the group wearing any other type of mask. Transmission of viral particles through cloth masks was almost 97%. And the reasons cited included moisture retention, reuse of the masks, and poor filtration, all of which can actually increase rather than decrease the risk of infection. The researchers concluded that the results, quote, could be interpreted as harm caused by cloth masks. Before we look at the actual findings of the study, I do want to mention that Cambridge University Press study again, because they also looked at a bunch of materials from this third party chart, which just makes it easier to visualize. A single layer of cotton blend was actually 70% effective at filtering those 0.02 micron viral particles. 
And we'll get to that percentage discrepancy in a second. But first, here is the study that she was actually citing. And the biggest problem right off the bat here is that there was no comparison to any group that did not wear masks. It was a surgical mask group versus a cloth mask group versus a control group, which was actually a really bad control group because as the study itself says, the control group had a very high level of mask use. So the study is simply saying that surgical masks are more effective than cloth masks. Duh, but let's actually look at some of the numbers. For lab confirmed viruses out of roughly 500 people in each group, we're talking about 19 cases for medical masks, 31 for cloth masks, and 18 for control. Now, what if there was a no mask group that was 60? That would actually be a 50% reduction from cloth mask usage, but we don't know because they didn't look at any no mask group. As for the harm quote, they said it could be interpreted as harm or the efficacy of medical masks, which are surgical masks, which are exactly what she was saying, just didn't work. Funny how she left that out, but really it is not logical to interpret that cloth masks are causing harm here. Now to address the notion that cloth masks are really only 3% effective, therefore they're useless. Well, first of all, they looked at a 100% cotton mask, which yeah, there is a major disparity with the Cambridge University Press study that I mentioned. 100% cotton should be doing at least 50% of the particles. So what's the disparity from? Well, it might come down to testing method. The Cambridge Press study, the one that I mentioned, says that the flow that they tested was three to six times normal human breath speed. And if I had to guess what caused the difference, maybe they went with a higher flow rate in the testing. The 8110 by TSI Inc. can do nearly three times the speed that the study I mentioned used. And from this paper on mask testing, they say more particles get through at faster speeds. So it could have been nine to 18 times the normal human breath velocity. <clears throat> Here are our test results from testing mask materials on a fire breathing dragon. Sadly, the masks did not block any particles. I just know in her study, it was a side test, which didn't give all the details. Well, the Cambridge Press study was the entire study being about filtration efficacy, and it looked at smaller particles and a ton of details. And this is where I want to present some of the most important new papers in this field. For example, this review that looked at 19 randomized control trials and quote, suggests that community mask use by well people or healthy people could be beneficial, particularly for COVID-19, where transmission may be pre-symptomatic and may be important during the COVID-19 pandemic in universal community face mask use as well as healthcare settings. There's also another really powerful experiment worth mentioning that the nerds are gonna love, and that was by Dekai Wu of UC Berkeley. They used a computational model to see how many people would be infected in different mask use scenarios. Here he is. These dots represent different people. In this run, there are 200 people. To begin with, 198 are healthy and two are infected. As you can see, when an infected red dot hits a susceptible blue dot, it becomes orange or exposed and then red or infected. This is reflected in the graph. Each time you run it, even with the same parameters, it'll be a little different. The experiment found that 80% mask use across a population like the US, just cloth masks could have prevented 80% of total cases. That is insane. And we'll get to Pam's final study in a second, but there's a massive review that is preprint, it's version two, but it's not peer reviewed. However, and this is a big but, it was published by over 20 scientists, including ones from Brown University, MIT, and Stanford. So this is legit. Now it's been called overkill, references nearly 100 studies. The team says, quote, Our review of the literature offers evidence in favor of widespread mask use to reduce community transmission, and that non-medical masks have been effective in reducing transmission of influenza. Non-medical masks have been shown to be effective in small trials at blocking transmission of coronavirus. And finally, that the decreased transmissibility from these masks could substantially reduce the death death toll and economic impact while the cost of the intervention is low. In other words, public mask wearing saves lives and does not cost a lot of money. Okay, now for the last study that she mentions, here she is. A recent study done this year in South Korea looked at the efficacy of both surgical and cotton masks for blocking transmission of SARS-CoV-2 from coughing patients. And what they did was the patients were instructed to cough five times while wearing no mask, surgical mask, or cotton mask. The researchers reported that neither surgical nor cotton masks were effective for filtering SARS-CoV-2 from environment or external mask surface. So surgical and cloth masks just don't work. Pam's right, let's just give it up. No, absolutely not. We need to inspect how this study was done. 
First of all, they had people go eight inches away from a Petri dish and then cough five times. Does that sound like a real life scenario? Do people just walk up to each other in public, stand this far apart and just, just hack into each other's faces? No. Even then, an actual look at the study's numbers makes a compelling pro-cloth mask case. They had four patients. One of them was non-detectable across the board, so we can look at three of the patients and their viral load in the Petri dish. Viral load of patients one, two, and three with no mask was 3.1, 2.1, and 2.5. With a cloth mask, 2.3 not detectable, and 1.4. Now tell me, if you have a grandma with pre-existing conditions, who would you rather have cough in their face? The person without a cloth mask or the person with a cloth mask? And again, this was actually SARS-CoV-2, this coronavirus. Now imagine if the Petri dish was also wearing a cloth mask. Then we get even better results. And the Berkeley Mask Sim team has a very good point here in general, quote, the effect of universal masking does not require full protection from disease to be effective in lowering infection rates of COVID-19. Just like how seatbelts aren't 100% effective, bulletproof vests don't block 100% of bullets, and condoms aren't 100% effective, well, I think all of those uh, still help a lot. Maybe I'm wrong. And the next really important point here is that masks are about so much more than just their raw filtration rate. It's also about a mask's ability to just blunt the force of a cough and lower the distance that that cough travels. And we have some great disgusting visualizations of this. Mask versus no mask, it is no contest. And then we also have this study that looked at the airflow of coughs with mask versus no masks. And the results are again obvious. They're just images. The masks prevent that massive burst. So who do you wanna be at the store with? Heck, this review on masks and SARS-1, which is physically very similar to SARS-2, the coronavirus that we're concerned about, they even say, quote, even if the face masks are ill-fitting, they are still able to interrupt the particles and airborne viruses sufficiently such that these pathogens do not reach the breathing zones of people nearby. And this paper in the journal Science says that, quote, masks and testing are necessary to combat asymptomatic spread of aerosols and droplets, and they have a pretty good illustration of, of somebody spraying those out right there. And these droplets also change the equation when we're talking about particle size and what goes through masks. You know, these viruses are attaching to droplets, which are much bigger. We're talking about greater than five microns when the virus itself is 0.1. And finally, it's a mask's ability to just keep your fingers from touching the orifices on your face. And that's in case you just recently touched a contaminated surface somewhere. Okay, now just a quick word on what might be the best filter method methods for a DIY mask. Well, you have that cotton blend, which did pretty well. There are some other ones like cotton twill, which also perform pretty well. But just to be safe, you can also step it up a notch and add something like Filthy, which is what I've been doing. A third party test at the Center for Aerosol Science and Engineering found that Filthy was able to get out 85% of those 0.3 micron particles. So while an N95 gets out 95, this can get out 85%. And the masks I've been making for my family have been super breathable with Filthy lining. And here's an example of the Filthy lining. And this is a mask that I made for my mom. Anyway, it's a little tight, but you get the idea ninja mask style. And sometime in the near future, I hope to link to the pattern to make that mask. And I will say Filthy isn't the cheapest. It's $30 for about 50 to 80 masks worth, but you can split it with some people, 50 cents a mask, not horrible. And final point, a lot of people are saying wearing a mask makes you a sheep. And well, to that I say, it doesn't make you a sheep any more than wearing clothes or a seat belt. No, or not drunk driving. If you really don't wanna be a sheep and you really wanna be consistent, my challenge to you is just run down the street naked shouting, I am not a sheep. I will not cover my body with cloth. So in conclusion, the bulk of the research shows that yes, cloth masks are effective for the general population. Perhaps if we were all wearing them, then we could end this sooner and actually get the economy and everything else going. To recap, we have that 79% reduction in family member infection rates by people who have COVID, which is super relevant for any enclosed space. We also have that computational model showing 80% mask use would result in an 80% reduction in cases. We know that healthy people need to be wearing masks because they can be asymptomatic spreaders of this, which is what makes this virus so unique. And we also have those multiple high quality reviews that are in support of community-wide cloth face mask usage. 
As for Pam Popper's claims, I really don't think they hold a candle to these studies, and some of her studies just straight up backfired. I mean, that one study on people coughing into a Petri dish showed that cloth masks helped. I'm sorry, even if the researchers didn't use that language. Also, surgical masks work, and I also don't think you need to be more concerned about office bacterial spread right now than you do about the coronavirus. Anyway, I'm glad I was able to respond because her comments have been turned off, so I imagine that her viewers, her loyal viewers in particular, aren't really getting another perspective. So maybe some of them will hear this, who knows. But in the end, as states open up and for future pandemics, we need to get the position on masks right if we're gonna be preventing deaths. Let me know if there are any other points against or for masks that you feel like sharing down below. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked the video or share it if you think it was useful. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.